All right, time to read the comments. Let's go. Let's go, man. I'd say 3, 7.3 cloth and 2, 8.2 tree. But I can't mine them. Ah, you mean you saw them, you see them. Yeah, that's... Uh, I remember those times when me and friends were stumbling upon high tier enchanted things and we weren't able to get them was was an interesting time but well it also happens to me sometimes nowadays too if i don't have my gathering gear with me yeah there is one time that i killed tier 7 or elemental turn out it's 0.3 enchanted so lucky yeah it's it's a weird bug i don't know if it is fixed now already or if it's still there i will simply continue killing all the elementals at least if they are tier 7 and just check it out first well i think you're right do you fight too when gathering um not with gathering gear i mean if i see a low hp person and i have the blood ladder on me which i don't in the last couple of runs i i mean it happened already it happened already that i have killed people when i was gathering but usually i don't find a fight it's not worth it it's a huge risk not necessarily fighting against some people because you find weak people but the problem is if a random person shows up or if they have friends then you are in trouble and you lose like gear worth more than a million and the loot that you already have gotten. So usually I don't fight. How much you get in one day gathering? Um, I don't really look at days, I rather look at runs and usually I gather for one to two hours and usually I make two million per hour in the black zone. <clears throat> ah, you scared me again. I went close to the mic. <laughs> I see, I see. Nice of you to put out videos when it's daily maintenance. Yeah, people, I. it's already a while ago that I made a poll, but I had made one uh, for like asking people who watch my channel when they want me to upload the videos and most voted for the server maintenance time so that's when i'm up uh, making them public does spectral diabor share the same skin with normal diabor i have no idea i have no idea i don't really pay much attention to skins where are you come from i are come from germany Thank you for the great content. I'm really enjoying your videos. I'm new to Albion Online, farmed my first 10 million fame from PvE and got now into gathering and was looking around YouTube and that's how I found your channel. While gathering I ran into the problem that I'm way weaker than other players because I switched between builds trying to find a weapon that suits me. In the open world, my IP is significantly worse than other players if they try to gank me. So I was wondering if you could suggest me a weapon or build that I should grind to get my IP or weapon level up. A weapon that could fit in all kinds of content, PvE, PvP. Uh, a weapon that fits for all the content. I mean spear i guess if you don't want to use gathering gear then you probably want to play the one-handed spear or the daybreaker because it's great in pvp it's great in pve and it also has decent mobility for running away if you go like uh, daybreaker or the one-handed spear plus uh, assassin jacket guardian helmet or soldier helmet plus some either high value boots like soldier boots or just some generic um 
leather shoes for the uh, sprint that gives you cooldown reduction as well. And then you just take everything on cooldown reduction as passives and try to run away from everybody. Spears are really good in PvE. Like they simply deal insane amounts of damage. And in PvP, it's basically depending on the skill of the player. Spears are one of the hardest weapons, but they are also one of the best 1v1 weapons. Mm. But if you want to go for gathering and use gathering gear, then you will want to use either swords combined with mining boots. Or you will want to use uh, something versatile like the bloodletter if you want to use any gathering gear. Or the double bladed staff. Love your gathering videos. It's kind of soothing to watch. Keep it up. Thanks. Are you Harry Maguire's brother? Uh, I don't know who that is. Let's see. Is he famous? Harry Maguire. A football player? Manchester United? Looks like it. Looks like it. I'm probably his brother, yeah. <laughs> you gotta have boards of steel to bring that many tier 8 tools with you. Um, well... I have been in the black zone for a while now and usually I don't die and likewise it's not as scary also I have the the cash on the bank in case of dying so I can get them back. Wait till you see him pull out the Avalonian ones. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And also like right now I'm not really dying anymore. I'm playing a little bit more serious or maybe I'm just a little bit more lucky. So maybe I'll bring a couple more Avalonian tools again with me. But it's questionable. It's questionable to go full Avalonian tools. Maybe I'll do something like using an Avalonian tool for the main resource that I'm gathering. But it's really hard to judge. You cannot really predict which resource you will find the most unless you go for a tier 5 gathering. I like the fast forwarding playback, but I prefer it without the game volume and some relaxing non-copyright music. Great vid, keep it up. Um, it's really a lot of work to find music that's not insanely annoying. Also, like everybody is using some non-copyright music. So you would hear the same song again and again and again and again. It's kind of annoying. Mm, what a hard working guard. Um, solo gathering black zone. I guess I was um, gathering some, some resource, some big stack at the territory, which you are referring to and just let got aggro of the guard he chased me and ran back again and then he chased me again i i can imagine hi apple cheese how often do you go out gathering that you don't record and post here um right now i'm recording every gathering session like the i don't know how long it has been but I have uploaded, like, I believe every single time I went gathering for, I, I don't know how long. Um, it should be, um, like, the oldest video in my solo gathering with commentary playlist. Since then, since then, I'm uploading every single gathering video. Mm, yes, dude, go with stone gathering again. I think I did. I think I did. And the video that came um, came public today was the one where I went for stone gathering again. And I even checked out 6.0 stone. But stone is worse profit selling at the moment. Yes, I know. That's why. 
What are these books in your inventory? Good videos as always. Enjoyable. The books are journals. I buy them at the market and then like I buy empty journals at the market and when you fill them they become more valuable and then I can sell them again. Those are journals you need it for laborers. They fill up when you gather specific resources like ore. They are good for gatherers too. If you fully fill up one, it costs more than the non-filled one. They are basically free extra money. Exactly. Exactly. Great videos. It would be cool if you added timestamps for high tier resources, point two and point three rarity, or the big gathering notes that you get most of your profit from. Just a suggestion. Love watching your vids inspired me to achieve tier 8 on all 5 gathering professions. <sighs> I could do that. I could do that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. If I will do that. I don't feel like doing it. I probably won't do it. Like if I, if I see like. 10 comments of other people, different people saying that they also want timestamps. I will maybe do it, but for now I won't. For now I won't. When is the last time you got 7.3 or 8.3 large note? Looks like it's extremely rare. Oh, this was when I was running around with small scale gear and uh, gank swap, meaning I have a weapon that you can gank with in the inventory with a couple of people from the guild wildcard. And there we found a big 8.3 stack in, what 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 is the map called? I don't know. It's in the east of Fort Sterling, definitely. It's a desert. There we found an 8.3 fiber node, but that's like already four or five months ago, I believe. It, it really doesn't happen very often. Um, today I found an 8.2 fiber node, though, when I was roaming around with Tor Vitonado. But we were not able to gather it, sadly. Guilds would already be around it. If you see note, look out for rando with a guild. Last time I tried, got killed by a group. Yeah, if somebody spots that and has friends, it becomes very dangerous. As a solo player or solo gatherer in that moment, it's usually, usually a big risk. But well, the... From 7.3 and 8.3, you also get like above 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 million. So the risk is kind of worth it if you feel like the map is rather inactive. How do you make your profit with these materials you gather? Sell raw or refine? Craft with it? I just sell them. Try red zone gathering while faction flags. Uh, uh. <laughs> the problem is that it would be way more dangerous, which would mean that I would probably not want to use Avalonian tools. And I feel like it is unlikely that the faction points would make up for the Avalonian tools that are then missing. Like the 20% gathering bonus is probably just as good as being faction flagged and it's way more safe, but it's less expensive. The red zone is so bad though, like, uh, Everything is just empty because it's just so insanely safe. So I will probably not do so. Why? To see how much silver can be earned this way, assuming the faction points would be converted into hearts. Also, like gathering doesn't give that many faction points, actually. 
Um, I think killing open world mobs gives more faction points and killing open world mobs is just one of the best things one can do if one needs fame. Mm. As a professional gatherer, can you tell me, is it worth it to get dire boar instead of wild boar? When you, when you have only one gathering tree, two tier five and rest not unlocked. Um, no. I would not say so. Um, if you're familiar to the black zone and survive in there, I would also recommend uh, going into the black zone even if you only have tier 5 because you will simply find way more resources. They will be way more full. You will get a big stack here and there and also resources will be way more enchanted than in the red zone and stuff like that. But I would suggest if you only have tier 5, go with a giant stack or something and bring back loot rather often. It is not, I agree, ox should be enough. Get like tier 5 first after you reach tier 6, then upgrade to tier 6 ox. Boar are good, but you are only tier 5, you need more time to spend in zone for more fame. Um, oxes are terrible unless you gather in the... Uh, yellow zone and blue zone there you can for sure use an ox and it's probably the best thing to do in the blue and yellow zone but if you gather in red zones or black zones never use an ox um but if you get killed on ox you lose your weight capacity exactly if you also like oxes are really slow they are just really slow they are pretty tanky but the people that are dangerous when you are gathering will kill you anyway if you have an ox. Like tankiness doesn't save you when you gather. Tankiness doesn't save you. You need invisibility, you need movement speed, you need uh, invincibility, that's what you need, and tons of mobility. Why I gather and always meet up ganker team? I also always find gankers. It's just normal, like it happens if you spend a lot of time in the black or red zone. Because you have less experience navigating the zones and yes, their meeting up with gankers can be quite stressful, I know. <laughs> it can indeed be quite stressful. Nice video, good luck, thanks. Hi, nice video. Any recommended we WP for novice player? Any recommended WP? Um, I don't exactly know what you mean. Like, I I can recommend you stuff, but but what kind of recommendation for what do you want? And I would not recommend uh, for newer players to play the Frost Death. Just so you have at least one tip from me even though I don't understand the question exactly. Attacking people who has outlawed won't give you outlaw. Yes, that's how it is intended to work. And most of the time it does work, but sometimes it's buggy and it doesn't. But yeah, if you attack people that are outlaw, you should not get outlaw, but this doesn't work 100% of the time. So if you want to play very safe and stuff like that and be on the safe side, just don't attack anybody. Is it better or not, the Q and E ability? You didn't say it in the video. Or oh, better. Better is a hard word. I know that in Crystal League, the first, the new first Q of the Frost Mage is meta. So it has to be very good. Otherwise, people would not be playing it. Um, I really like that Q. I really like it. I love it. It's amazing. It's exactly my playstyle. Um, but better, hard to say, depends on the content that you are going for. If you're going for some big scale stuff, you will definitely want to use the third Q. The E ability didn't change. 
Um, buddy, maybe this video itself has already told you something. <laughs> but that's up to interpretation and you will not know my thoughts on it. Since you are doing PvE, why not use the Great Frost Staff for the E? Because I wanted to play the normal Frost Staff. But yeah, the new uh, Great Frost Staff should not be that bad. Like, I mean, it's generally OP right now. It will probably be nerfed somewhere. But yeah, it should be pretty good for PvE even right now. Maybe I will go into the roads with the Great Frost Staff once. Um, let's see what the Google Translator says about this. Uh, Inter 8. Let's look at English. Inter 8 form, tier 4 fucked. Solo PvE, greater curse stuff. I guess Google Translate either doesn't work as well, which it sometimes doesn't, or whatever, I don't know, or you wrote something weird, I don't know, <laughs> not sure what that means. That's a German comment, Leute mit Tier, Tier 3 Mount sind ungefährlich, hat er gesagt. Du hast meine Gefühle verletzt, aber recht hast du trotzdem. This means in English, people with tier 3 mount are not dangerous, he said. You have hurt my feelings, but you are right. Pretty funny comment and yeah, that's usually how it is. It's really sad to see a lot of high tier enchanted resources which are empty. Oh, I can deal with it. It's okay for me. Wait, what? It really requires tier 7 adventurer to equip gallant horse? I don't think so, so maybe I'm just stupid. Um, I've seen a couple of comments accidentally already and a lot of people were saying that you don't need tier 7 adventurer for the all the special mounts like spectral diabor, gallant horse and all those that you get from the premium season thingy challenge thing and that would make sense that it would make sense that those do not show on show up on the destiny board because they are it only shows the mounts that you need the adventurer uh, what's it called progression um to unlock them so all the special mounts seem to not need these things and so yeah i wasted a little bit of time doing pve i guess no special mounts are not bound to equitable equipable rules like other mounts is the mount not on the destiny board you do not need to worry about fame you can use it even before you have the adventure level the mount is Meaning you can mount up in a Spectral Diabor as soon as you enter the main world. You just need to get it. So he basically wasted like two hours of his time. By the way, hello YouTube, I know I'm going to be in reading comments video. You're totally correct on that. Welcome to Albion, yep. <laughs> Smiley face, I thank you. You can use all premium mount without even unlocking, for example, tier 7. I was leveling up my fishing during the fishing event. I found some safe spots in Roads of Avalon for fishing. I stayed there for a lengthy amount of time, but I got lots of junk. My question is, is it better to move around to get better spots or just stay in one safe spot loot-wise? Thank you. When you, um, I have the feeling that when you start getting junk, you have a very, very high chance of getting more junk. Then you need to switch your position and look if you again only get junk, trash, garbage, or if you actually start getting fish again. You fish at a fishing spot until you find junk, then change. Yeah, I also got that feeling. 
I always choose Gallant Horse for transporting. The amount of times it has saved me as most successful gangs I have found are off the first engage. They catch you with the Gallant Horse, you just press the ability and avoid the first engage. Um, I mean, yes, the Gallant Horse is definitely amazing. One of the best mounts for transporting and gathering and stuff like that. It just doesn't have much carry weight, which is a problem. But that's not really a big problem for fishing because all the fish doesn't weigh a lot. It really doesn't uh, have a lot of weight. Mm -hmm. To counter the gallant horse, it's either with firewall on fire staff or you have more people to catch you after you have used your ability. Firewall? Does firewall work against the gallant horse ability? I wouldn't think so, like it makes you immune to any CC and fear is also a CC. I would think you can just run through a firewall if you have your ability activated. Which better, fishing or gathering as a newbie? Um, fishing seems to be rather fast. But I don't know. Mm, as a newbie, it kind of feels like fishing is something for solo players and gathering is also good for group content. I mean, you can gather as a solo player as well, but it feels like fishing in a group doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So I would rather divide it like that. I don't know. Like fishing and gathering are just activities that you either do in the yellow zone not very efficiently, but safely. And then you don't need any knowledge, you don't need any skill. You can just do it and make some safe profit. Or you go into the red and the black zone and then it's extremely difficult. You need to play extremely well or you will just lose a lot of money. So... <laughs> I would rather say fishing is for solo players and gathering is more versatile and you can also do it with groups. Isn't it a tad too risky to justify bringing such high tier gear into the black zone? I just moved from yellow to black zone yesterday after a month of silver struggles and so far even tier 5 is a big risk. Um, well, the risk does not really increase with having higher tier gear, I would say. Like, it rather goes down because you can kill more people so you are safer. But um, risky as in, well, it would cost you more money if you are more expensive, of course. It is not too risky for me because, like... It's really simple math. If I if I go there, like the gathering gear I use right now um, costs about 1.5 million, maybe 2 million silver. And I die less than, I don't know, for... I die less than like one time per four runs, five runs, six runs, I don't know. I haven't died in the last three or four weeks. Um, so, and I get two to four million per run. It depends on how long I'm going. So it's hard to say, but I get two million per hour. So if I gather like, let's say I gather 10 hours in one month and die once, I will still like, I will have made 20 million. 20 million silver and I died once so I lost like the loot of one run so let's say I lost 2 million and I lost my gear which is another 2 million or 1.5 million so I will still have made um what is it 16 million from gathering in that month if I only died once if I died twice I would have made um 12 million silver in that month so it all depends on how often you die. That's really the question. And then you can easily uh, calculate, is it worth it? Is it, is it worth the risk or is it not? 
<coughs> yep, lol. Now you know what I was talking about. I did figure out how to escape the purge. Iron Will from Sword with cheap shield for CC resist and Pest Lizard and Undead Cape since Sterling Cape only works once against a group of seven. It's pointless. Um, <laughs> I have probably been gathering more than you. So I already knew what you were talking about, big ganking groups that are really hard to escape. But I'm going together. I'm going gathering so often. Is that grammatically correct? Probably. Um, and most of the time I survive and I make profit because I survive most of the time. So um the iron wool from swords plus the mining shoes are a really great escaping option one of the best one of the best but you need to time it well mm, pest lizard i'm not a big fan of the pest lizard because you cannot zone zone out if you fear somebody which is a really big problem also the pest lizard is really slow which is also a big problem when trying to escape dangerous people. A lot of people like using uh, lizards, but they are actually pretty bad. When you get ganked by uh, good ganking groups, which are most of the time the only dangerous people for you, if you are a good gatherer, then lizards do not help you. Nice community you have built up here. Would love to have it on my own channel as well in the future. Thank you. These tier 8 zones are so heavily ganked, it's crazy. It depends. Some tier 8 zones are really, really rough. Am I first? Uh, I think so. The laser sword in Arcane is deals big damage, to be honest. Yes. Uh, the W deals quite a lot of damage and it doesn't have a high cooldown. The problem is just there is no other spell on arcane staffs that deals damage. So like it's a pretty low DPS weapon. Damn that was close. Good fight man. Yeah that was a, <laughs> was a rough fight. It was a rough fight. This is relaxing to watch. Thank you. The deadly potion. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Was was a nice play. Was very close, very dangerous. Pretty exciting. You wasted time getting the tier 7. You can use a horse without any tier. It did not even glow red when you look at it. True. Probably. I may be wrong, but I guess you don't need the Grandmaster achievement because the Gallant Horse is a premium mount, which means it doesn't require you to level up in order to equip. Looks like it. Hello, hola, hello. I farmed your six ore too much. I didn't even realize I have leveled 91 on it without spending any learning points. And tier six ore is pretty good, it's pretty good. Is it even worth gathering stone these days? Um, depends on how you are gathering. If you have something that can carry a lot, like a Spectral Dire Boar, you can go for tier seven stone. But if you only have very little carry weight, you will only want to gather tier 7.1 and tier eight stone. 7.1 and higher is worth it. Yeah, these are very valuable. But if you have a lot of carry weight and you have a pork pie and stuff like that, you can also gather a tier 7 stone. Man, these videos are chill as fuck. Subbed. Thanks. Martlock portal region is heaven for gatherer. Less gankers compared to other royal city portals. Yeah, I also have the feeling like Martlock is pretty chill right now. But I remember times where it was really hard. Um, to get through Bleached Gull Desert and the tier 7 map afterwards. Maybe some big guilds have changed their positions. How much silver do you make on average per run? Really curious since I think high tier gathering is a shill's way to earn huge silver. No calculations. Um, <laughs> high tier gathering is not very chill. 
IT gathering is rather intense and nerve-wracking because if you don't survive you have not made any profit and you lost a lot of silver depending on what gear you're using but if you're using garbage gear then you will die to everybody so you kind of need to use some good gear so you are kind of expensive um how much silver i make on average it's like about two million per hour like if i think about all my black song gathering i averagely make two million per hour um the roads of avalon are way worse there i make only like one million per hour like i had better runs but on average i probably only make one million or a little bit more per hour like rods of avalon are pretty bad but in the black zone on average two million per hour i would think so this was the last comment